I'd like to welcome Dr. Zena Werb. She's Professor and Vice Chair of the Department of Anatomy at the University of California, San Francisco. Her talk is New Insights into the Microenvironment and Metastasis. Thank you for joining us. No, oh, thank you for inviting me. Would you begin by discussing the extrinsic and intrinsic pathways that your research is focused on and what they're telling us about tumor biology? So uh, my lab has really focused initially, in, uh, you know, for many years, uh, on what's uh, on the extracellular uh, microenvironment, particularly the extracellular matrix, and uh, a great interest in how that turns over. And so that during cancer, uh, most people would think that the tumor cells have to invade and then you know, go walk about to other tissues and then find a niche there and, and kind of grow in a new home. And the tumor cells, of course, by themselves are not enough. They have to have the right uh, soil in which to take. And so we've been interested in that soil. And one aspect of it is that in virtually every solid tumor, there's a huge increase in the synthesis of the molecules uh, called extracellular matrix molecules, like collagen, that make up the, you know, the superstructure uh, outside the cell. But at the same time, there's a huge increase in enzymes called uh, proteases, most of them matrix metalloproteases, that are involved in cleaving these molecules and either uh, making pieces which have new activities and can do things like bring in uh, cells of the inflammatory uh, network uh, or change uh, signaling and so forth. So uh, our interest in the matrix metalloproteinases took us initially into cancer from other uh, more basic uh, developmental processes. And then, of course, from there you ask, okay, what cell makes that? And most of the proteases that are present in tumors, even though the huge amounts, are actually made by the host cells, the inflammatory cells that are responding to the tumor, although the tumor cell can make it themselves. They just, it's much easier to have a subcontract uh, for, the, um, for these uh, enzymes. So we, uh, now we're really trying to understand how these enzymes uh, are working. And today I'm going to talk about one new aspect of how one of these proteases work, uh, which is that it actually alters the permeability of blood vessels. And because it's altering the permeability, uh, it then uh, regulates how well chemotherapeutics can get out of the bloodstream and into the surrounding tissue. So that's an idea of some of the things that we're doing that are outside the tumor cell. Then within the tumor cell, we wonder how is this all being organized? What kind of molecules have to change uh, because of mutation and signaling as a cell becomes a tumor cell. And so we've been working on two kinds of molecules. One is a molecule that keeps the cells normal. It's called GATA3, and it's the, the, um, the protein, it's a gene, that allows normal breast epithelium to behave normally. And it gets lost during tumorigenesis, uh, at least when you get a bad prognosis to the, uh, the worst prognosis mm -hmm. cancers. Uh, but it's necessary for normal development. And so I'm going to talk about how that gene, as a master regulator in these cells, actually ends up regulating the extracellular microenvironment. So you have a change genetically within a cell mm -hmm. that then tells the uh, surrounding cells and tissue change so that I will be the perfect uh, uh, microenvironment. And then we've also uh, been interested in, in uh, genes that come up um, during tumor genesis in areas where they actually make multiple copies. It's called amplification. This is a process that occurs in most cancers, and it's particularly interesting in breast cancer, which is the area in which I work. And so we've been working on a couple of these to try to understand why 
a, a cell would want to amplify, you know, increase the uh, activity of one of these um, transcription factors so that it would make it better able to grow and metastasize. So that, that's how we've been doing uh, this. And in all cases, we end up being interested in what's around the cell and it's the kind of crosstalk uh, between these. And it's important to remember that a tumor is not cancer cells alone. It's actually a t an organ that's, you know, uh, no longer normal or it's, you know, unique because it's, you know, bringing in things that maybe never are together in your, your lung or your heart. Uh, but it still has to operate uh, under body rules. Well, um, would you discuss how you've explored the tumor microenvironment in relation to drug response and talk a little bit about the permeability? Yeah. So uh, what we've been interested in, again, is what role the uh, response to the cells rather than the intrinsic uh, tumor cells themselves might have in, in drug response. So we know already that uh, tumor cells can have mutations so that uh, drugs can't get into the cell, or they get flushed out faster, or they get uh, um, inactivated. And that, that's a very important process uh, in terms of how well a cell will respond. But we know that even when you have many tumors in an individual because they have metastasis, some of the tumor cells or some of, the, some of the metastases will respond and other ones won't, and there doesn't seem to be any difference. So to investigate that, we've been using um, a drug called doxorubicin or adriamycin, which is used in breast cancer and other cancers. I mean, it's been used for 40 years. And just looking to see how that works. And when I say looking to see, it turns out that this protein, uh, I'm sorry, this drug is fluorescent. So we can actually look at what is happening in a living animal to actually follow where that uh, drug is going. And what we found, to, much to our surprise, was that although it's a small molecule, it actually behaves like it's very big. And that's because it's probably binding to proteins in the serum. And so what we found is looking at one kind of breast cancer, which is susceptible to the, uh, the drug that the drug didn't get out in certain places. So uh, what you find is that early pre-malignant lesions have blood vessels that are not very leaky. The drug doesn't get out. And then what we found is that there's very little killing. The second is just when you start to become malignant and the cells start to walk around the body, at that point, the blood vessels become very leaky, and the drug gets out and gets into the tumor, and that's the most effective time. And then when you have a late tumor, the drug can get out, but it can't get into the tumor. And the reason for that is at that point, there's so much hydrostatic pressure within that tumor that it's actually preventing the drug to get in. And so we've been interested in how that's controlled, and can we overcome it? And we found uh, a series of mechanisms at, that we can interfere with. So what are the next steps in this research? So we want to find out, uh, of course, we've been doing it mostly uh, in mice, uh, whether uh, some of the agents that we've been able to identify, I mean, one of them being the matrix metalloproteinases, could be targets uh, in, uh, in human cancer. Now. A few years ago, there were nearly 80 companies that made drugs to matrix metalloproteinases because everyone thought the, this would be a great target because you keep the tumor cells from uh, you know, invading and metastasizing. And that turned out in the trials not to be true, and so everyone pulled the drug. But now we're starting to understand that there are many processes that are all uh, controlled by these proteases. And so what you might have to do or might work is if you could target one activity and then, in, in this case, use a, a chemotherapeutic drug to actually inactivate or kill the cells. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think 
that um, since some of these things have gone to phase one and phase two and maybe even phase three trials, it would be really interesting to try to convince people to do trials of combinations or uh, where you give one drug than the other, and maybe that will make um, tumors more susceptible. But that, that's, and we're also interested in other potential uh, ways of getting at that same pathway because uh, we think that the, uh, the, the fact that the body actually keeps the drugs from getting in to where uh, the tumor cells are is, is, uh, is a major uh, issue in, in, uh, in therapy. Mm -hmm. Dr. Werb, thank you so much. You're welcome.